Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronage of Statewide News Service, jbstechfelly.com, and now columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, Jewish Press is a weekly national newspaper uh, that de- you know targeted for the observant Orthodox Jewish community, and I have a column called Albany Beat where I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community or doesn't, as the case may be. And speaking of government, we have right. what's called an advocate or a lobbyist uh, at the Capitol, Jerry DeLuca. He's with the New York State Association of Fire Chiefs. So we're going to be talking about fire. It's going to yeah. be a burning issue. Yeah. <laughs> what's the burning issue for the fire chiefs? Well, uh, the burning <laughs> issue for us right now is uh, fire safety and the installation of residential sprinklers in homes. Uh, We're advocating that the state adopt a new building code which would require the installation of residential sprinklers to save lives of both firefighters and residents throughout the state. Uh, The building code is designed to protect the residents and homeowners uh, from shoddy construction and it's also designed to provide for safety requirements. Uh, The international code uh, currently requires the installation of sprinklers. New York is currently reviewing that code and determining whether or not they will require the sprinklers Wouldn't as part of it. would be very expensive? I mean, smoke alarms, if you, you know, you put up a battery, $10, $15, what do you have to do? Bring in the pipe with water? It, it, it would only be for new construction, so it would not require any retrofit. And the average price is about $1.35 a square foot for a new home. So if you're building a 2,000 square foot home, you're talking a little over $2,000, dollars Yeah. So, Compare that to safety, and there are also a lot of requirements under the new code that save home builders money so that there's a trade off there. They get to use different materials in exchange for the installation of the sprinklers. Even that had to be bargained? That had to be bargained, and they're fighting us on it still. So, so wow. But, uh, you know, I always say I'm more of a libertarian where I say keep government. You know, if I want to, ha- if I, if I want to kill myself, you know, if I want to have my home and I want to do what I want to do inside my home, don't mandate that I should have all this, you know, next, next thing is going to be carbon monoxide detectors are going to be mandatory, and other things are going to be mandatory, and yes, you know, all but the, you know. The, the building code, though, is designed to ensure that, that a home is built properly. Everything is detailed from the size and height of steps, so that people of certain ages can climb them, uh, to the width of doorways, so that you can get disabled people through them. It's all required in the code. There's an electrical code, there's a requirement for how many studs must be. So it's all one big code that works together. And sprinklers are just one more part of that. You know, and I look at the building and I just say, you know, with all the material, like couches are flammable. And you have so many, and I just saw where in Vegas they had this big fire at 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 one of the hotels where everything was made out of plastic, Plastic. palm tree, plastic, you must have seen the video. I saw that, yes. It was amazing. I mean, but so there's a lot of plastic in people's homes also. I mean, you just can't make it a a perfect home for fire prevention. No, you can't. But if you can reduce the amount of burn in a home, it's important to both the firefighters and to the residents. One of the things, the chairs we're sitting on right now, I can tell are filled with foam rubber. Yes. Burns very hot, very quickly. Yes. Your couch at home. No. (laughs) And homes today burn eight times faster than a traditionally constructed home. Why is that? Because of the materials that are used in both the construction and the materials that are being used for furnishings and carpeting, uh, cabinets, everything else that's in a home these days. That's actually what I was just going to ask you that maybe with all the codes and their fire prevention, are there less fires, you know, in a newer home than in old times? But you actually just answered that. Right. They, they, I won't say that there's more fires, but the fires that occur burn faster. Really? And, and give us, the fire service, less time to respond in order to save the home. Okay. Now you got another issue that's uh, one of my favorites is uh, exemption for wearing seatbelts and fire apparatus. When the, fire, when the seatbelt law was first passed, um, there was an exemption written for emergency service vehicles, fire trucks, police cars. Um, We, as a fire service, want our people to to wear seatbelts. A number of um, accidents occur around the country with fire apparatus responding to a call, 
getting in accidents, people running through a red light, even though the fire truck is coming, striking the fire truck. It is proven that when firefighters are wearing their seat belts, they will be much safer. So we want to eliminate oh, that exemption, exemption. Okay. because they were court previously exempted. And the bill's passed. We're waiting to see if the governor will sign it. Again, my libertarian side <laughs> is getting to me where, you know, you well, should, actually, you know, aren't you guys smart enough to know that you should be putting on the seatbelt without having to be told by a vehicle and traffic law? Well, and actually many fire department rules <laughs> and regulations within the department require it. This just helps the fire department Mandate. enforce their own rules and regulations. So. <laughs> Uh, In fact, some apparatus won't even move unless the seatbelt is buckled. You know, mm -hmm. that's, okay, so what is this uh, EMS billing, uh, authorized fire department EMS billing, what is that about? Currently, um, ambulances and ambulance yeah. districts can bill for services, and they generally bill the insurance companies because not all ambulance services uh, are volunteer. Many of them are career and paid for. Fire service, fire departments also provide first response EMS service. Under the law currently, the only people paying for that is the taxpayer, and we can't bill the insurance companies to help support the fire service. And so we're looking to make a change there. All right, now, you have, an, you have a, a convention, a conference every year. Yes, and we do. And next year you're at the Turning Stone Resort. Correct. Did you go through the place to make sure it was fire safe? Uh, absolutely, one of our requirements is that any place we go, as the New York State Association of Fire Chiefs must be sprinklered. And when we have our show, we have a committee, a life safety committee, that goes around while we are there, making sure that we're abiding by all the laws and rules and that the turning stone is as well. well what about their plastic uh, trees? and their it, 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 The place is sprinklered and that, that is key. Um, we remove a lot of that stuff while we're there and put in our own displays. We have about 325 exhibitors while we're there, right. and about 14,000 attendees every year. What, are fire chiefs or firemen? Both. Yeah. Both fire yeah, chiefs and... There's a lot of chiefs here. Yes, there are. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's a lot of chiefs and oh, firefighters and throughout and, the and state. Don't, now, are they upset that you use the word chiefs and not, you know... No, we're fire chiefs and firefighters. Right, but mm -hmm. are, are the Indian, are the no. Turning Stone... No. Upset? No. Because, you know, they get very upset about these things. No, and fire chiefs have been around forever. How many forever. fire chiefs are there in New York State? Once well, there are, 18, there are 1,800 plus fire departments, and there's usually <laughs> one chief and then three to four assistant chiefs in each department. So they all come to this convention? They, well, yes. Well, and then when you get to big departments like the city of Albany or huge departments like New York, there are hundreds of uh, yeah, chiefs and battalion so, chiefs yeah. and, and so And you cetera. bring your uh, equipment to the turning stone into these conventions? We bring in apparatus. We bring in all the materials that a firefighter or fire chief would want to purchase. They display, try and sell their wares. But more importantly, because from never, our perspective... I never see this covered on TV. Well, we, we, we do get some coverage out in the Utica area, in the Rome area. Well, it doesn't carry through here because that's where the show has been out there. We've been there for the last six years. Oh, really? So, yes. Prior to that, we were down in the Catskills. Oh, uh, which hotel? Um, Grossinger's? No. Um, Kutcher's? Nope. <laughs> Not, Pines? It, one that's not there anymore. Uh, well, uh, they're all not there. They're anymore. all not there. Yeah, I know. But it was before I right before now. I came to the, the association. You know, we're, we're talking remember. about Catskills. It reminds me of being Jewish over here. <laughs> right. And we are in the Jewish view. Now, it's very interesting. In the Orthodox Judaism or traditional Judaism, there's a lot of candles, a lot of fire going on for just basically that Friday night, the Jewish woman will light candles, for example, and my wife lights 16 candles Friday night, and, uh, you know, is that a cause, I'm a cause for fires, or maybe that's not exactly your department, but burn units, like well, you say, EMT. I mean, who has that many candles when you have small kids around, and they have a lot of small kids, too? Unfortunately, there is a history of fire um, because of some of the traditions. Uh, as we both know, there was a significant fire this past spring where seven people died in Brooklyn. Uh, over uh, Shabbat because they were heating with a, with a heating plate. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I would encourage anybody there are- just, just for our audience, why would be a hot plate on in the middle of the night? Who keeps their oven on or their stove on middle of the night? But just to explain to our audience that at Orthodox Judaism, at Torah Judaism, you cannot light or put out a fire on the Sabbath. So once it's on the range, 
it's on for on. 24 hours. All right, so now go ahead. And, and <coughs> se several children and, and uh, seven people died in that fire. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things I would encourage people to do is look for alternatives. There are ranges out there that specifically have Shabbat mechanisms so that they can turn on and off on their own, um, and they're, they're meant to be in conformance with uh, Judaism and, and the, the requirements of the Torah. And there are other, also other things called, and I believe it's pronounced a blech, that covers the stove. To, to, uh, and covers the, the knobs so you can't use them, but you can leave it on and leave, and they're much safer than a hot plate. Candles, whether it's in, in the Jewish tradition <coughs> or in Catholic churches or any place that we have religious ceremonies, candles are always a concern to the fire service. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that when people are using them, they keep them as safe as possible, in a sturdy container, in glass if possible, I know there are many times there are traditions that have to be upheld, but make sure that you keep them away from children and keep them as sturdy and away from flammable materials and, as possible. And Hanukkah, I mean, we're lighting for a whole week. We're lighting, well, I think it's like 45, uh, a total of 45 candles. Yeah, of, and that's you know, uh, if you, you have a kid lighting, yeah, so by the time you're right. done with a few kids and a few people lighting, you have a lot of, you know, the more than your normal family. I mean, who lights candles like eight days in a week and little kids don't right. light candles? Right. And uh, like I say, every Friday night you have candles. So, you know, there should be some education uh, program the, the, from the, the fire uh, chiefs to explain to the Jewish population. And we'd be happy to work with, with uh, the, the rabbis and the count, rabbinical council and anyone else who would be interested in working with us. The NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association, uh, has put out a specific bulletin on Shabbat fire safety. Uh, we can make sure that we get you a copy of that. It was approved by the Rabbinical Council, um, and it's been circulated around, and we'd be happy to share so that. In I'll fact, I'll leave a my, copy. I'll post it on my website if I get I'll, an electronic version. I will send you an electronic, but I'll leave you a copy here so that okay. uh, we can get it to you. On jbiztechvalley.com, shameless plug. But, <laughs> um, but I also wanted to, you know, there's a holiday called Lag Omer, and we have a bonfire during that time, and it's a controlled burn, I guess you might call it. But, you know, that's... Yeah, a lot. That, that's significant. But, but you know that it's interesting. Our room was ahead of Chabad um, on New Scotland Avenue. There's a little uh, synagogue. It looks like a house, but it's a a little synagogue, and it was two doors away from a yard from the the fire station on New Scotland. Now in that yard, now there's the back library. But beforehand, he says, well. You know, that was more like burning the hummus. We, right. we burned the, the leavened bread right the day before Passover. So he'd always ask the fire department, could you be, he'd always say, fire department supervised. I mean, you know, it was a little fire. Right. But, you know, listen, you don't and just light fires to. around, yeah. that's all. Oh. Yeah, and they were happy to do it, you know, and they learned. We, we are always happy to come out and assist. Yeah. Uh, any fire department around the state, contact the local chief, and, the, and they'll be happy to come out. Yeah. You know. um, how, well, I want to ask, how successful do you think this past legislative session was for you? For, for us, yeah. for fire chiefs? Uh, we consider it one of our most successful sessions in a number of years. We got six bills passed, uh, two of which were introduced just this year. And as anybody that's been around Albany for a while, getting a bill introduced and passed in the same session is unusual. Getting two is very unusual. So working together has been a key for us working with the Firemen's Association in the state of New York, a neighbor from, to the library here, uh, better known as FASNI, uh, the Association of Fire Districts, and the fire coordinators. And we're also working with the International Association of Firefighters, all coming together to make it our voice louder in Albany, because individually, we're, we're, we're not as loud when, when we come together. Individually, you're whimpered when together, we come together roar. Yes. Okay. So it was a little difficult this year. We, we had our, our lobby day planned. We came to Albany. We only had about 100 people, but that's twice what we normally have. It happened to be the day that Dean Skelos resigned as the majority leader. We kind of got lost. but no we one cared about you then. But we still got a lot of attention. We come in uniform. People yeah. know who we are. They recognize us. And we got six bills passed. Still, you have a good position. I mean, we have so many on Mark and I. You have so many people on lobbyists. 
And, you know, they're advocating, oh, why not? I want a million dollars for this, a million dollars for this. I mean, who's going to argue against you? Fire safety. No, we're against you. We don't like, you know. <laughs> well, you're yeah, I'm only, a libertarian. Well, yeah, you're right, only Mark. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. I, I, I often tell people I literally represent the guys in the white hats. The fire chiefs wear white hats. Right. We're the good guys. Nobody dislikes the fire service, right. you know. So we come in, we make our case, we make our case the best we can, and we, we've been successful this year. Do you have any formal firefighters who are elected officials? Well, there are a number of, uh, fire, of elected officials, both at the local level, um, at the state yeah. legislature. There's a couple of them. Phil Boyle comes to mind. He's a volunteer. Uh -huh. um, some frequently used to be, and they're not anymore because as they've gotten busier in their legislative careers, um, Phil still is an active legislator, um, but at the local who, level, yeah. no, the, who else? The, those are the only one. That's the only one that the only comes one to mind right to now. Okay. Yeah, at the local level, many of your villages, towns, right. your local elected officials frequently come from the volunteer fire service. Well, the county executive of Albany County. Albany County is a, a former paid, firefighter. Yeah, paid firefighter. The chairman of the county legislature. Uh, Sean, oh, Sean Morse, Morse yes. uh, soon to be mayor of Cohoes. I know he's, he's <laughs> actively running. Um, you know, it, both it goes hand in hand that a person who's involved with the community should be, you know, maybe uh, just a government yeah. official. It really is a segue into the do you have a uh, arena. Do you uh, support? candidates uh, no. at events or at their fundraisers or anything? The Association of Fire Chiefs is a, is a 501c3 not-for-profit, mm -hmm. uh -huh. primarily education-based. That's something I, I started to talk about. Right. Education is a big part of our show every year. We do a lot of classroom training, hands-on training, and that is the now basis for it. you when you do hands-on training. <laughs> you got all these fire We have jokes. the proper equipment. <laughs> but uh, um, so we, we do not support candidates because of that. Okay, so, so you'd have to be a 501c4 if you wanted or, to? Or, or establish a separate uh, entity to, okay. to do that. Now, talk to me about sparklers, because I, I think sparklers are terrific. They, they, you know, you can get a little singe on your finger, they're not going to burn, it's, you know, you're just going to flick it off, you're going to go ooch. You're not even ouch, you're going to go ooch. <coughs> so, I mean, the, what's uh, wrong with sparklers? Well, the fire service, <laughs> both the state chiefs and FASNI, along with districts, we all once again joined together and opposed the sparkler legislation when it was first introduced at the state level yeah. and then when it was passed down to the counties to implement. And we have multiple reasons. One is they're not quite as cool when they're burning as people think. They can get, they can get warm. Um, we've had two fires this year in Warren County, both attributed to fireworks. Uh, one was improper disposal in a garbage can after they burnt sparklers. It burnt the house up. Yeah. The other one was uh, they put them in the back of a pickup truck and the truck burned up. So oh. state yeah. chiefs, we were opposed to it primarily because of concerns about storage of them in uh, small stores, etc., around the state. As they're, they're only allowed to be sold for a short period of time each year. And, and around the 4th of Albany July, County, no, Albany no. County, we, we, we were able to, to stop it from Albany County. What happens next year, who knows? Because so you're totally against it, though. That's your position. Altogether. altogether. You see, I, I was looking in Rensselaer County for some sparklers to bring today, and I couldn't find <laughs> them because it wasn't the season. You, you can't sell them anymore. And that's right. Right. They, and if you notice, there was nothing but tents up all over the place. Right. So we, we had concerns about the, the storage of those boxes of sparklers. That one sparkler is not such a big issue, but when you have a box full of them, oh, okay. that becomes a much bigger uh, fire load than just a single sparkler. So, um, that's you have people with fireworks, I don't want to say who, but I mean, some people, it's not Mark either. No, uh, don't, don't, people don't say that. Come in, you know, and they say, oh, I got it from North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, have, you know, people come with fireworks. You know what I have? Is, well, where did you get them? You can't get, oh, I was in North Carolina on a trip and I bought all this stuff. There, there, there are people that bring them in. They're illegal in New York. Generally, the police don't bother you right around the 4th of July. Right. If you're using them other than that, or if the neighbors complain, then, then, but once you open the door, it just continues to open wider, and that's our opposition to it. Well, um, and look at what happened to Jason Pierre-Paul from the, from the Giants. Yes, yeah, yeah. Playing with fireworks, he lost a finger, he lost a contract, he might have lost a career. Wow. You know. 
So that's his problem. Yeah, but it's <laughs> you know, you know, there's a, he's an, a grown adult. Yeah. And how many children play with him and, and get injured? Well, when every I year? was growing up, so the statute of limitations is all over with. No, uh, no, my uh, family father of a friend of mine would buy uh, firecrackers, fireworks from out of a truck trunk of a car, mm -hmm. <laughs> and M eighties was very popular. And there was one year when a woman, a family was throwing out a bureau, a clothing bureau, you know, and, and we put an M80, which is a quarter stick of dynamite, oh. in the bureau, and we lit it, we closed the door, and ran across the street, and it went and Why all the- really Oh, yeah, it's a, it's oh, a quarter are. stick of dynamite. They are very powerful. Yeah. Really? Yes. And we put it in there, and it was like, wow, look at that, <laughs> you know? But again- The I, potential for injury was, was huge. 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 And I came I unscathed. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not glamorizing. Or, no, you know, I understand. The, the fireworks. And this has been an uphill fight for us. There's a lot of folks that don't understand why we're opposed. Um, but because of the potential for injury and from our perspective, the potential for a fire load was, was very large. And we don't believe that the revenue for the counties was that big. Oh, it's underground economy. Yeah. It's an underground so, economy. They just got some sparklers. They got I get it out of a trunk of a right. car. You don't think the yeah. guy's paying yeah. taxes on so. it. <laughs> like, you just saying the spark, if there would be, you right. know, you'd open up New York State for fireworks. I mean, the, the is the revenue worth, dollar, the, you know? worth the cost? All you got to do is go to the legislatures, hear one of the debates, and you'll get all the fireworks you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think the chief would like those fireworks instead of <laughs> M80s. <laughs> Tell me about uh, this, uh, the public education efforts that you do. And uh, there's a pamphlet that no longer exists about after the fire. Uh, it says here, but what, what's the after the fire? What's I, the? I, that was what you do yeah. after your house catches fire. Yeah. And, and it was just went out of publication. Right. Um, but our public education efforts, we have, hold a conference every year with the Office of Fire Prevention and Control. We co-sponsor it. We have about 200 attendees every year from around the state, fire service people, getting them better information, how to educate the public, getting them to go out into their communities and do fire prevention education. It's not just Sparky the Fire Dog and it's not just you know showing people how to use a fire extinguisher there or not just an open house every year at your firehouse, but how to best accomplish it. So this has been a highly successful program for state chiefs and OFPC. And where do you do that in we the do capital it, district? No, it's out at the State Fire Academy in Montour Falls. Oh, wow. And, but we bring That's people in the Finger in, Lakes, in the Finger Lakes yeah. uh, outside Watkins Glen. Yeah. Everybody knows there's a, there's a NASCAR race out there right. uh, next week. I'm not a NASCAR fan, but there's a lot of people out there. Um, but they, uh, we bring them in so that we can provide them with the tools and information necessary to go out there to their communities and do fire prevention education. Um, and we're, we've in been increasing it over the last several years. And when I go back, actually, I'll take a look about that after the fire pamphlet and see whether or not there's some other information we can put out. Yeah, because I, I really think it's important for people to know that even a day after the f fire, you think the fire is out, it's not really out. Well, and it's what are the effects of, on your, you and your family after the fire as well? What do you need to do? There's psychological. Yeah. Do you, you contact your insurance company? Right. Who do you need to contact? What do you need to provide them? Where are you going to go to get housing? All, all the, the, the serious issues that a family is affected by. You know, and then you have an in the spring, you, oh, is that in the spring? That's, that's the, the conference Falls every year, conference. Montour Falls, okay. yes. And uh, what's the fire safety trailer program? Um, BullX, digital safety. Okay, if you're not familiar with BullX, BullX is a company that started here yeah. um, based in the RPI incubator, right. Tech Park, and it's now a multi, multi-million dollar company still based in Albany. Uh, their employees are, are, are here in Albany and they have a, a, a large number of employees in Europe as well. Really? They build um, fire safety training uh, facilities, uh, equipment, trailers, and we had a trailer which uh, we've now turned over to another fire department which for use as fire safety. Um, Bullock's also re totally re-engineered and redesigned the fire safety house at the state fair. 
Um, these people are phenomenal. Their technology is, is extremely good. And they're they 20-somethings. Uh, well, they were. When they're they, now in their 30s. Well, because so. they, I remember they won the Center for Economic Growth had uh, award ceremonies. Yes. And they were the, the top winner, I mean, when yep. they first came on the scene. And it was amazing, the video that they put together and all that. And, and, and the technology they have, um, we're working with them to try and develop uh, additional training facilities. Uh, we're looking at the potential for one here in the Capital District. Um, very much in the thought stage and not in the development stage well, yet. It would be very interesting to have it as part of the Jewish community, to let the Jewish community know about fire safety and to impress it upon them. While it's a very... Uh, it's it's just a, a benign type of learning, you know. Yes. So it's it, it's definitely it's high tech. You know. um, some of the things they've done is they've developed a system. They started out with a fire extinguisher training system, and that was what they first developed. And they used uh, it's an extinguisher, but it's connected to a computer, so it doesn't really go off. But it shows the fire growing, or right. if you use it properly, um, the fire goes out. They've now evolved to they have fire hoses that feel like they're full of water. You pull the, the nozzle back and it electronically shoots out water, but there's no real water. <laughs> it goes to the fire. It, it's, it's great for the fire service. And it's great to have them here in Albany. So, so t tell me, uh, go going back because in a few minutes, you said there were six bills that you got passed. Uh, so tell me the six bills. Well, there were two that were extenders right. um, for volunteer firefighters. It, it, before I get to that, okay. state chiefs, we represent both career and volunteer fire chiefs. So we have about 11,000 members, current, past chiefs, people who want to be chiefs someday, firefighters, state. commissioners, right. Um, so we, we represent both sides, career and volunteer. The two bills were the heart bill and the lung bill, which recognize the dangers of firefighting and the potential for heart disease and lung disease from being a firefighter. These bills are five year from all the smoke that from the mean? smoke, from the stress, sure. yeah. from you know the the activity that you undergo, the physical activity. Um, and both these bills expire every five years and they're generally renewed. They were both renewed this year, so those are two. Uh, you mentioned the seatbelt bill. That was another one. We had another one regarding what we call LOSAP. It's the Length of, Length of Service Award Program. And that is a program designed to keep volunteer firefighters continuing to volunteer. If they, many departments, by a vote of the people in their volunteer district, can establish an award program where for every call they go to, every drill that a firefighter goes to, they earn so many points. If they stay for an extended period of time, it can be 20 or 25 years, at the end of that, they can earn a small stipend. It's not a pension, but it's a stipend that pays them so that it rewards their volunteerism. So what's that set at now? It, it depends. It varies from district to district, and it, it, it determines. Approximately. What are we it's pro you're probably talking... 500, 5,000? Less than $5,000 a year. Yeah. Okay, okay, so we're not talking a lot of money, but it's a good it's program. It's a thank you. It's a thank you. It's an incentive to continue to serve. Sure. So, because a lot of people, you get folks that join in their 20s, when they start having kids, right. mm -hmm. it becomes more difficult. I did my 10 years. And well, right. Right. the other thing is you don't want to leave your kids without a father or mother. Right, right. right. So it becomes more difficult yeah. to, to devote the time and effort to training. There's a lot of training time to be a volunteer. So this helps keep people in the fire service. And it's worked. Our recruitment and retention, uh, in part because of that, is, is good. Um, so that was one of the bills. It, it was, it, this bill specifically dealt with public workers, public employees who were authorized to leave their job by their boss to go to the fire. And then they weren't getting the credit because they were on the public payroll. Was another, that wasn't fair. Was another bill the truck weight? Bill? Truck weight bill was another one, um, and that okay. bill exempts fire trucks the same way snow plows are exempted from truck weight restrictions. Over a bridge, you mean? No, not over a bridge. As I've often said, we can change the laws, the vehicle and traffic law, but I can't change the laws of physics. You still can't put a heavy truck on a bridge that wasn't meant to carry a heavy truck. But no, just on the highways. Oh, highways. So that if we're traveling the highway, 
um, we can be overweight, the same way a snowplow is overweight I when see. they're carrying all the salt. And certificate of need relates to application of determinations of public need? I mean, that, that is a bill that primarily is of importance. The city of Saratoga um, and city of Glens Falls currently have issues where they can't get certificate of need to operate an ambulance under the fire okay. department. So it looks like you had a successful year. We did. And uh, I, you know, we're running out of time. Is there something that you wanted to bring up that we didn't know to ask you that you want to mention? No, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. And so, right. and you know, like I said, our priority, is, we have two of them right now, sprinklers, and now we're looking at the issue of cancer in the fire service. Right. Um, same way heart and lung uh, issues happen, we're seeing much higher rates of cancer. Again, taking in the smoke. Taking in the smoke, the, the turnout gear that we wear gets covered with soot, it doesn't get cleaned properly, diesel exhaust, all of these issues have shown, so we're looking to get the same kind of coverage for cancer. Chief, we're out of time, but you're doing such a great job people, keeping people safe. It's maybe people don't appreciate it enough, but you know, listen, we need a fire department and we need people to put, like you say, their health and their lives on the line, literally, and doing it for the good of the people. And thank you very much. Yes. Keep on going much with good success. Health. Keep up the good Thank success. you for the opportunity.